the reason why we angle it downward is once again you don't want to scrape her urethra does that sound pleasant to you no it would hurt hey guys welcome back to my channel if you are new here welcome to my channel my name is Trey I'm a third year medical student in lovely Atlanta Georgia and I make videos about medical school and life so I hope that you will choose to stick around today I wanted to continue with my women's health video series and talk about pap smears this will be very interesting because I'll be talking from the patient perspective as well as the medical student perspective so hopefully if you're do for a pap smear and you're nervous or if you're a medical student that's getting ready to go on your ob gyn rotation this will be helpful to you the first thing is the nurse that puts you in the room is going to tell you to take off your clothes including your underwear and your bra and they'll hand you a gown so you'll either have that gown open to the front that's if they're going to do a breast exam on you or open to the back more than likely you'll have it open to the back um and they'll also give you a sheet to put over your legs. Next thing is, once the doctor comes into the room, you're going to place your feet in the stirrups. I know it sounds like super objectifying, but it's mainly for visualization. Um, so yeah, you'll put your feet into the two stirrups and the doctor slash medical student is going to tell you to scoot down until they tell you to stop. And basically, like let's say this is the end of the exam table and this is your head is this way, your butt is this way. You're gonna keep scooting and your butt is gonna be basically hanging off of the end of the table just a little bit. And this just once again helps us to be able to see everything. As the medical student, the first thing is always inspection. So you're looking, you're seeing if you see any um, rashes, any lesions, any discharge any abnormal coloration, the basic stuff. Now we're gonna get into the fun things. Um, some people say you should introduce touch before you just go in there and do the pap smear. Sometimes I would, sometimes I wouldn't. It also depends on what doctor I was doing it with. So you might wanna tell the patient, okay, Mrs., let's say Miss York, um, you're gonna feel my hand touching the inside of your thigh. And you always want to touch with the back of your hand. It's just less intimate feeling. So you'll say, oh, you're going to feel my hand on the back of your thigh. Do you feel my hand? And she'll say yes. And you just want to continue to talk to the patient and let them know what you're doing, especially as a medical student. People think we all know what we're doing because we partially don't. We're learning. Um, so just keep talking to the patient. Don't go long periods of time with like silence because then they start worrying that something might be wrong. Next thing, if the patient's legs are not open enough for you to be able to see things, don't like push their <laughs> legs open. You can imagine how uncomfortable that is. So more than likely, the doctor or the medical student is going to tell you, um, can you open your legs until you feel my hands on the back side or the outside of your thighs? Um, and this way, it's, the patient feels like a little bit more autonomous. So the next thing, more than likely, Actually, 100% of the time, especially as a medical student, you should have a chaperone in there when you're getting your pap smear. I've had pap smears done before where it was just me and the doctor. It didn't bother me, even if like I had a male doctor once or twice do my pap smear. And it wasn't weird to me. I really just want you to get in there and get it over with. So I didn't mind that he didn't have a chaperone, but in general, you should have a chaperone. So what the chaperone is going to help you do, they're like, kind of like your assistant. So they can move your light for you and they're also going to help you with putting the lube on the speculum. So let me close my speculum. So this is the speculum I have. These are the standard ones that are probably going to be at the office where you work at. It's a plastic speculum. There are also metal speculums. We use those mainly in the OR though. And it has a place right here where you can put a light into the speculum. I don't have the light. Sorry. Um, so this is the speculum. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to place the speculum between your index finger and your middle finger. And we use our index and our middle finger on the other hand as well, which I'll show you in a little bit. So your assistant is going to take the lube and open it for you. I hope I 
actually tore it correctly, I did. So you're gonna put the lube on the speculum and then you're gonna spread it on the top bill and the bottom bill. That was kind of a lot of lube. I think that pack just had a lot of lube in it. Um, and there is some controversy over whether or not lubricant contaminates the sample. So you, if you're using just a tube, they'll probably put less. If you're using um, these kind of samples where it's a lot, it would mainly be for if you were doing like a swab um, to check for like an STD or something like that. So yeah, you're gonna put the lube on the top and the bottom bills of the speculum. And then now we're gonna use this other finger, this, this other hand. So this is your dirty hand, your contaminated hand. And well, the only reason why we say this is you don't want this hand to get onto your um, cell sample because you're touching her body and whatever natural bacteria, flora, whatever is on her skin is now gonna be on your hand and you don't wanna contaminate your sample. So with this hand, you're gonna use your index finger and your middle finger once again, and you're using these to spread her labia majora and labia minora apart. You really don't want to drag any extra tissue, any extra skin into the vaginal introitus, and that's basically what this does. And the vaginal introitus is a fancy word for the vaginal opening, basically. So you're gonna spread the labia majora and labia minora and you should be able to see her urethra right above her vaginal opening and then also the clitoris as well. So you're gonna take the speculum and you're gonna turn it at about a 45 degree angle and you're going to angle it downwards and enter into the vagina. The reason why we angle it downward is once again, you don't wanna scrape her urethra. Does that sound pleasant to you? No, it would hurt. Um, and that's kind of like the angle, the natural angle of the vaginal canal as it goes downward. So then once you kind of get in there downward, you're going to turn it right ways up and then you're going to continue to advance it and you can go ahead and start opening it. So the way that you open the speculum, you push down like this. I've never had to open it this wide, okay? <laughs> you don't really have to click it that much. Um, and some people are weird about clicking too. I've had residents tell me like, don't don't let it make a sound, like don't let the speculum make sounds. So the way you keep it from making sounds, I guess that can make the patient nervous is you push up on this green part and then push down and then the speculum will kind of like lock in place wherever it is that you want it. So speculum is open and you should be able to visualize her cervix at this point if you can't just keep going in and you should be able to see it some people's specu speculum some people's cervix are um angled upwards or downwards and you can kind of play around with the speculum until you see the cervix right in the middle next you will take um your brush and your spatula to get your cell samples and I'm gonna put the speculum down now just so I can kind of explain this. So the cervix is kind of like a donut hole, very similar to the back of your fist. So this is the cervical canal, so that goes into the cervix, which leads to your uterus. And then this is the outside of the cervix. So the brush looks kind of basically like a spoolie. And so you insert the brush into the cervix and you're gonna twist it around. Um, and get a really good sample of the endocervix. And then the spatula kind of goes around the outside of the cervix and gets these outer cells. And the place where most people develop cervical cancer is this junction between the endocervix and the ecto or outside of the cervix. So that's why you want to get a really good inside sample and a really good sample of the outside as well so that you won't miss this junction point. All right. So now we've gotten our, uh, we got our sample and we're ready to take the speculum out. The most important thing is do not simply close the speculum. If you just close the speculum, you're on her cervix and that would not feel good. The biggest thing about getting a pap smear done, it should not be uncomfortable. Um, it shouldn't hurt. Let me take that back. It might be uncomfortable because it's, it's weird um, and you might feel pressure, but it should not hurt. So the speculum is open and you're looking at her cervix, let's say, 
you're gonna pull back the speculum before you close the clips on the bill. And then at that point, you can just take the speculum right on out. After this, your doctor might do a bimanual exam. And basically with the bimanual, they just wanna feel your uterus and feel for your ovary to see if there's any masses or any pain when they're touching you. Um, so what they'll do is they'll insert, once again, index finger and middle finger into the vagina and then they'll take their top hand and they'll be pressing on your belly, like the bottom part of your belly and pushing up on the back part of your cervix to kind of make the uterus come up to the top so they can feel the uterus and then they'll turn to the other side and they'll fill your ovaries, turn to the other side, fill your ovaries and that's it. I've never had anybody do a rectal exam so you should not get a rectal exam. <laughs> so yeah, that's the basics of getting a pap smear done. The more you do, the more comfortable you get with it. Everyone's vagina and cervix is different. So it's not always gonna be the same process. It's not always gonna be as easy. But like I said, it should not be painful. And the more comfortable and relaxed you are, the faster it'll go by and it'll be over before you know it. So I hope this video was helpful for you guys. And let me know if you want any more videos like this. I will see you guys very soon, hopefully. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Bye. Mwah.